over the course of the next three videos, we'll develop an interpretation of the Laplacian operator, uh, which is frequently encountered in many partial differential equations used in physics. So the Laplacian is the divergence of the gradient of some quantity, which we'll call u. And it's typically written in terms of this uh, gradient operator with a little two, so it's a zero squared times uh, your quantity. And this gives you a, uh, a scalar. You can also apply this to a vector function, in which case it'll operate on every component of the vector. Uh, but for the purposes of simplicity, we'll just consider its operation on a scalar function. And to give you an idea of the universality of this operator, we can list some common partial differential equations used in physics. There's the heat equation, which relates the time derivative of the heat distribution to a thermal conductivity and the Laplacian of the uh, heat distribution. We have the wave equation, which relates the second uh, time derivative to uh, the speed of the wave squared times the Laplacian. You have the Schrodinger equation, which says that uh, you can find uh, the wave function of a particle, psi, by solving this equation. And again, we encounter the Laplacian and the term for the kinetic energy. You have the Poisson equation, which has the Laplacian of a quantity u. It's equal to some density. This is often seen in electrostatics, for example, or in uh, gravitational uh, problems dealing with gravitational fields. You have the Helmholtz equation, which is uh, basically another, uh, it's a, a special case of the, of the wave equation which is the Laplacian plus some constant k squared times u is equal to zero. And of course you have Laplace's equation, which is that the Laplacian of u is equal to zero. And these are some of the most common partial differential equations that we see in physics. And in each one of these, you see that the Laplacian of the quantity that we're trying to solve for uh, is present. And what will, so clearly the Laplacian gives us, uh, it's telling us something very important about how the quantity that we're interested in will vary in space and time. And what we'll see is that this essentially gives you a measure of how the average value of the quantity differs from the average value of its neighbor, uh, neighboring points. To do that, we first need to develop the concept of the average of a function, which we'll introduce in the next video.